Hanan, allow me to briefly introduce our speaker for today. Um, Mr. Hanan has been in UTM since 1978 and in November 2011, he joined the Occupational Safety and Health Environmental Unit of UTM. He received his Master of, of Industrial Safety Management from University Kebangsaan Malaysia, UKM, in 2009 and his Bachelor of Management with Honours in Human Resource from Open University Malaysia in 2006. He has attended a number of certified programs such as the Safety and Health Officer Program, tra the Trainer, and so on. Um, Mr. Hanan is also a trainer facilitator in National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, Senai Johor, Johor Skill Development Centre, Pasir Gudang, Johor, and many more establishments all over Malaysia. He has also been invited as speakers for a number of seminars given in UPM, USM, UM, and so on. So without further ado, please welcome Mr. Abdul Hanan Makasi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. That very good afternoon to all of you. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, MC, for the very I don't know the two introduction of me. Okay, uh, today I'm standing here in front of you just to give you some awareness of a key safety internet. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Lee because of the invitation, uh, invitation, invitation uh, for me to give a talk. I think uh, I'm not the appropriate person of the uh, good speaker, but at least I'm sharing my knowledge to you on how to handle safety in the lab. Okay? So my experience in the lab uh, before I shift to unit OISH is about 30 years. So, from the, the previous experience, what, uh, what I, I've already uh, gone through, I'll share to you, okay? And my presentation is must be in uh, English, and sometimes I will speak in, uh, to uh, mix uh, Bahasa Malaysia and also uh, English language, okay? I hope you can understand. If you, not, if you cannot understand uh, when I'm talking in Bahasa, but my slides in uh, uh, English, English, okay? All right. Okay, when we talk about uh, safety, safety in the uh, space of the lab, that means it's very critical. You have to, you have to do something about the safety in the lab because it will make you what you call, uh, there's so many hazards in the lab. You have to be aware of that. Maybe uh, you are sometimes take for granted about the hazards in the lab. So you must, uh, have uh, some uh, what you call feeling that I have to protect myself, not only yourself but all others. Because of the words, others will also will uh, involve in the accident uh, in the lab. Okay, okay. My first slide is what is laboratory? Okay, what is laboratory? You are you are working in the laboratory for so I think uh, maybe for few years. For the start is many many years. Okay, so. When we talk about the laboratory, it's, it's a place, okay? Building or part of the building used for scientific and related work, okay? When the when work conducted in the labs may include teaching or learning, research, clinical diagnosis, testing or analysis of a sample, okay? That's the lab, okay? And <coughs> types of lab, okay? <coughs> Meaning that uh, there's many types of lab scientific teaching ready for science and engineering. If you go uh, in uh, most of the UK, you can see civil engineering, mechanical engineering, they have a science faculty, they have a science lab. Okay? Sometimes the one faculty they have science lab and also engineering lab. Okay? When we talk about science lab means physical, physics, chemistry, biology and maths, all the computer, CLC, even C lab. Okay? I think all the lab you have here. Okay? When we talk about engineering, maybe chemical engineering, they have lab, okay? Mechanical, electrical, civil, and uh, architecture, right? 
So this is the lab. Start from lab in hand. <coughs> in the usually in the uh, educational uh, institution. Okay. All right. Usually, lab is con are considered to be high real time compared to other areas in the industry. Okay, in the industry there are so many workplaces in the office. Okay, in the workshop, in the lab. Where else? Okay, and sometimes uh, some research, uh, uh, like frequency of academic lab research actually is ten to fifty times greater than the industrial lab. Why? Because you. You are working in the lab, uh, you are doing all the sample, all the analysis, I think so many, compared to the industrial. Industrial only, it, pro it produce some, some product, only that lab, certain lab, a certain chemical only you see. But you go to the uh, academic uh, uh, lab, so many lab you have, so many sample you have, so many chemical you have, so many equipment you have, you have to handle. So that means thanks to 50 times more accident can be uh, happen in the lab, which, uh, especially in the academic lab, right? That's why I'm saying here just not to, I'm to just to give you awareness of the safety and have you have to work safely in the lab. You have to work safely in the lab. Okay? Okay, see. What do you think? Because sometimes you are you are you are you are thinking about there's no hazard. There's <coughs> cannot be happen the accident, but actually can be. Accident do happen if you not properly handle the handle the uh, the cylinder and you put the uh, chemical just on the floor. Okay, so this is the thing you have to put in mind. You have to what call pitikan, which one is the How to manage all this in the lab? Okay. Okay, have you done this before? Have you? Multiplicating. Yes, I have. 30 years ago, uh, 20 or 30 years ago. Because nobody aware about the safety. Not in the school time, but in uh, the uh, UTMKL. Okay? 20 years ago, when I prepared, preparing the solution, stock solution, this is the method. But nobody, what do you call? Say this is unsafe thing to do. Okay? Okay, this is an example. Alright? So, what is unsafe and unsafe condition? There are many exposures in the lab that pose a hazard to your safety and health, and you may have never considered them as a hazard before. That's why every day you done your work, you do it, you, you, uh, right? you do your experiment, you do your analysis, sometimes uh, you cannot uh, consider that as a hazard. Maybe you, you may say that it's nothing happened to me. I've already, uh, what, one month, one year doing this, nothing happened to me. But you must think that not today, tomorrow, next month, next year. If you are here for, uh, for the PhD student in five years, you must think that accident will happen. Maybe it's not uh, not happen to me, but what about, what about tomorrow? Okay, what about tomorrow? You have to think about that. Right? That means you have to accident do happen in any workplace. There's uh, no workplace is immune to hazard. All workplace is immune to uh, not immune to hazard. Office also have a hazard. They can expose to the hazard, and they do can. Uh, Mendapatkan uh, hazard kembali, okay? And after that you have your accident happen, okay? Okay, this is example. Eh? This is example that means uh, an undergraduate student working with on a spray in the hood when she removed the reflux condenser, the solution bath splashing her face and the chest. In spite of fact, the student was wearing a goggle to the solution managed to go across the sink and into her eyes. So. You have to think about that. When you are doing your experiment, you are handling a chemical, make sure you have fully protected yourself. <laughs> Don't expose yourself to the handling. Okay? So what can be done to prevent this from occurring at the end? So when you when uh, 
if you ever really, uh, uh, you happen to, what you call, happen to meet uh, any accident, take a lesson from the accident. What should I do to protect? And what should I do? This, this accident are not going to happen again. Alright? Okay? This is a biggest challenge to me. And challenge to you in the ocean. When you go to the spectrum, all the, all the, uh, what in the left, the, like this in the university. That means, uh, I can, I can see the benchmark of the city in the land is very low. Okay? It's very low. Only, uh, to us, uh, to, uh, not a few only. The standard of safety is, uh, uh, a bit, I'm not going to say it's very high, but at least they have the safety in the land. Okay, so convincing the people that lead safety is serious and that is important. All right. So make sure that you uh, at, at the end of this uh, presentation or at the end of the uh, day, you have something you have to uh, have what you call put in your heart that safety is important to lead. All this make uh, safety is the first priority when you think when you are inside the lab. Okay. Okay, this is the biggest challenge. See some of the content there. I went to stand on the lead safety. No, I went on the roof. Just uh, to show you an example. Okay, sometimes people say, don't think nothing, uh, nothing has happened in the past, therefore it must be safe. Okay? Or, come on, there's a heaven in my lab. So, but how can you really show that you never have, uh, accident never happened? How do you show that? Okay? So, I think uh, the perception of the, uh, you see this, that nothing happened in the past, therefore it must be said, you just uh, put in mind, accident do happen. Okay? You have to control the hazard. You have to control the risk. You have to make your work safety uh, when you are uh, working with the air. Any, any, any equipment, any material in the lab, while you're doing your analysis, or while you're doing uh, any diagnosis or whatever uh, you bring to land. Okay. okay. What I'm concerned, maybe even, even though that uh, you are not 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 had any accident, but for the safety practice project negative image of the university. Okay, when the visitor came to your come to your lab and see all the housekeeping and uh, uh, your lab is well terrible classes there, uh, chemical on the floor, okay? And the, uh, but the uh, chemicals are not la uh, labeled properly. So it's, well, well they treat your, our image, our uh, image of the industry, right? So that means, let us take uh, together and make a responsibility, responsibility, okay? To make our, our land safe. <coughs> okay, no matter which, in the way, what place, safety and house are hazard. So, there's no uh, workplace immune with hazard. All workplace and hazard. You have to control the hazard by uh, by doing some of the uh, risk control. I will I will I will what I call I will show you how to control the, all the hazard in the lab. Okay. When I talk about the lab uh, hazard, that is anything. Okay, anything that may cause injury harm or damage. That's the meaning of our uh, definition of the hazard. Okay, that is it. That means what? Anything that may cause injury or um, damage. Okay. When we talk about the hazard, there is two hazard: safety hazard and also harm hazard. Usually, safety hazard is an acute condition, but uh, chemical is chronic condition. That's why when you are working the lab and you you thinking about uh, happen to me, but. Uh, what about if that chemical is, uh, you know, you have exposed to chemical and the chemical, uh, some of the chemical is in chronic condition. You are not getting uh, today or tomorrow, but after years, okay? Five years, six years, ten years, while you finish your, your, your studies here, your work, uh, working outside. So that's also caused by accident by uh, the lab. From the lab you have working. Okay? Make sure that all safety hazard and the and the health hazard you must control. Meaning that's a health hazard which are uh, which 
which uh, cause uh, an illness to you, okay? Which result in illness to you, okay? So if you know, if you identify the hazard to certain uh, that uh, may uh, know, uh, that is to make certain that no any adverse effect will be caused by any potential hazard or agent. So this the thing you have to be what you call to look at and to look for the hazard in the lab. We don't want that the hazard will give our adverse effect to our heart or injury to our part of the body. Okay? So why concern? Why concern? Why you are here this afternoon? Because we want you to prevent an accident. Okay? The importance of lab safety is prevention of accident from what you doing in the lab. So, I commend the same thing like said, people do. Uh, <coughs> okay? And some of the causes of the lab uh, accidents are. As I listed here, lack of working understanding of the hazard because you cannot recognize the hazard. You you, you don't even to identify the hazard when you're working with the uh, with the lab. Okay, improper handling of use of equipment, then inexperience, not follow procedure. Okay, distraction or lack of attention to task, broken damaged glassware or equipment and others. This is some of the causes of accident in the lab. You have to aware of that. If you are not trained, you go and train. If you are not, uh, uh, what I call, uh, not, uh, not sure about the experiment, you ask people who are experienced about the experiment. You, are, you don't know the hazard of the chemical, you go, uh, you refer to the MSGS, refer to the uh, label. What is the hazard of the chemical? Whether it is poison, whether it is toxic, whether it is variable, or whatever. So that means you have to to be trained uh, before you uh, start to work in the lab, all right? So what's the concern of the unsafe lab? See, damage and destroy the equipment. Destroy the research nerve. You are, you are uh, doing your research, PhD, master, or postgraduate. So if you uh, happen, with your, the lab is set on fire, so all your words. Destroy. Alright? Okay, for poor public image of an industry, delay she and she do. Okay? Ability of teaching and research speech when it's got a fire explosion in your lab. Where is the place uh, you can uh, do your experiment, you do your analysis because your lab is not burn. Okay? Regulatory fine because OSHA industry is mine in OSHA hand. Okay? Occupation safety and health 1994. That's got uh, what you call if you are if you are, if you are what you call uh, not follow the uh, section section uh, under OSHA Act 1994 you will be fine. Okay, All right. Uh, what about the damage? Extensive cleanup costs, personal injuries, and lastly, there is a cattle. Okay, make sure that. You, uh, when you, uh, when you are working the lab, make sure that safety is the first priority. Priority, okay? Okay, this is what it calls some of the, uh, what call accident happen. This is in Malaysia. What is the lab safety that means, you see? Mama sign you are in UIT and Tumaka. Why are you in the lab? Why are you in the lab? You see? Okay, this is an example. Okay, also this one. Lotopod kimia magma. Bahan kimia bumbu. There's village there. There's fire and there's an explosion. Chemical explosion in the lab. Because lack of understanding of the chemical, uh, 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 chemical handling of chemical. Right? This is the uh, example of the chemical. If you don't aware, if you don't uh, make a safety, a uh, prosperity in the lab, this is the consequence. Fire explosion, uh, example is fire and explosion. Okay. So, what does that safety really mean? The teaching of problems are simply washing out your, for yourself, everyone else in the lab, 
and is facing problems and protecting them and being careful and aware of the song. It's the main, it's the main what important point. If you want to what you call, want to control, uh, want to prevent the accident in the lab while working in the lab. Alright? Okay, let me do so. Once you uh that once you uh want to go to the lab, just uh put in mind what can go uh if you have a hazard, there's so many hazards in the lab, okay? Just uh some uh, thinking about what can go wrong. Eh? What can I do to minimize uh, to minimize the risk of the experiment? What do I do for something this goes? Just uh, put in your mind, just question yourself okay, about the hazard in the lab. Okay? So there's so, so many hazards. I will talk later. Okay? So that means it's our responsibility, not only you or the management, but all of you okay, must be responsible about the safety in the lab. A safe and healthy workplace does not just happen. It must be created, okay? It must you, you yourself created how to work safely, how to prevent accident in the lab. So, what's our objective today? To, so, our objective today, to join the Dakar Academy, adalah untuk kita to promote safety awareness and also to encourage the safe work practices. Because why? We want to prevent an accident, okay? We want to prevent an accident in lab, okay? And we believe, so we believe that lab accident, illness, and issues are prevented provided that safety and health is managed. You have to manage yourself, you have to uh, implement the safety procedure, you have to, uh, what do you call, to work properly, safety manner, safety manner when you are, you are uh, exposed to the hazard. Everyone in the lab is responsible for their own safety and the safety of the others. So if you are not only you or yourself, but you have to think about your colleague, about your friend inside you. you would, we, we don't want that because of you, our friend got, uh, got injured. Okay? Because of you, our friend uh, uh, can get illness about uh, uh, from what we do uh, the experiment in unsafe manner, all right? Okay, this is something uh, you have to avoid, all right? All this one, okay? That means uh, usually we want to pour, or you want to transfer any, any chemical, you must transfer in a film cover. Why? Because we don't want that the vapor will contaminate all the lab area. If you have your, uh, you are not wearing any PPE, you are not wearing any respirator, you will inhale the vapor. If the vapor is toxic vapor, so it will and cause you some illness. Not today, not at the time you uh, you you are born, you transfer, but later maybe one week, two weeks, because some of the chemicals are in chronic. Not uh, what you call you you get in the you direct on. Uh, provided if you are inhale so so much of vapor, you can have the effect. But you if the vapor is very uh, not so much, you you hear every day every day hear. No, sometimes it will affect your your body system, right? Okay. You, you will see the uh, expression of the, uh, the face of the uh, operator, you know, because, you see, that means you are here, some of the weapon, okay? So, it's your, it's your responsible to protect yourself, okay? Where an appropriate PPE, and which part of your body is exposed to the hazard, alright? So, you like, <coughs> this uh, such thing of uh, this uh, picture, that means, the root of exposure is in the operating inhale the vapor of the chemicals. So how to protect uh, the, the, the vapor from good side of the lung? So you must wear an 
to be on respirator to prevent and to go inside of the water to obey. So, a good operator, if you are responsible to yourself, respond to others, if you want to handle, yeah, the example that you have already put out all the EPP, okay, that means you have, uh, you have prevent uh, any, uh, anything happen, you have already protect yourself, right? So, this is example. How can you prevent anything when you don't know the cause? So that means, when you are working in the lab, make sure that you really know what is the hazard, you really know how to protect yourself, you really know what is the procedure, you really know what is the same working practices to handle anything in the lab, whether it is an equipment or or a chemical or whatever you are you are handling, okay? The lab or what will be. So also if you know the hazard, make sure also your friend, your colleague, your partner <coughs> about the hazard. Make sure everyone else knows. Okay? Because you want not only want to protect yourself, but you want to protect others also. Right? So as we know, it's now uh, we have to know the, the, the definition of the hazard is anything that can cause harm, injuries, and damage. So, if you look at the lab, uh, what's the hazard? How many hazards you have, or what type of hazard? Is anything in and around the lab? Just recognize, just identify what's the hazard in the lab. Okay? <coughs> you can uh, identify by material. The material use, the chemical use, okay? From the equipment, okay? The equipment you use to uh, to, to, to take uh, any data, the process, your experiment, your method of experiment, okay? And also the people. This is what you want, but you have to look when you are in the lab, okay? See the chemical, you see, uh, identify the equipment, Identify the method you are doing, uh, the, uh, the experiment, of also the people. Okay, the people that means your partner. You or you yourself. Is, is the correct, uh, is the safe, uh, safe uh, what do you call, safe practice I'm doing? So, ask yourself. Okay, you have to ask yourself. Alright. So, each lab will have its own specific hazard depending on the types of the function. Types and function. Okay. Maybe chemical chem chemistry lab, the hazard is different from computer lab. Maybe the biology lab is different from physics lab. Okay? It's depending what types of lab and depending what is function of the lab. Alright? So but but the most common the common uh, what the common uh, has the lab has is there's a uh, that means uh, from the uh, types of lab the physical function and the uh, what you call uh, function and the uh, type of function there's some common hazard there are also uh, specific uh, hazard all right so you have first of all know the hazard why what what are you working with. Okay? That means if you go to the lab, a physical lab, you know what you're working. If you go to the chemical lab, what's the uh, hazard you are handling? Okay? If you go to the physical lab, what's the, uh, what's the hazard you are handling? If you go to the computer lab, what's the hazard you are handling? That's you know your hazard. Right? Therefore, the first principle of uh, when you're handling a chemical, uh, as an example, know your hazard, know the, know, uh, know your hazard, not the, uh, not the chemical, nor the hazard. Okay? That means, when you, uh, when, uh, when you want to use the chemical, you have to chemical, know the chemical of the hand, uh, know the name of the chemical, and know the hazard of that type of chemical, because you can refer to the label. They've got a symbol like that, symbol like uh, flammable, symbol uh, oil, uh, toxic, symbol harmful. That's it. Know your hazard, know your chemical, know your hazard. Okay? This is an example. 
Okay, and it do uh, it do was contaminating the surface of the clean bench with seventy percent alcohol while a person burner was clean. Okay, so you must know that alcohol or ethanol and azam ethanol is very flammable. If there is an open burning like this, usually you can get head fire. So maybe that means you have to not enter, not enter before you want to start your work, right? Or before you want to use the chemical. Make sure that all the surrounding is not hazard to you, right? Okay, this is time hazard. Sometimes, okay, sometimes uh, hazard in the, in the lab is obvious. You know that it's obvious, like, you see, uh, example that the cylinder is not secure with the chain. It's easily can fall down, okay? Sometimes it's hidden. You have, that's why you want to inspect, you want to identify or inspect the lab. You must see, you must look around, up, down, inside the cupboard, okay? Behind the cupboard, okay? That's it. Sometimes it's hidden. And sometimes it's developed, okay? Okay? Sometimes hazard is developed. Today, you see, there's no hazard, but maybe tomorrow, it becomes hazard. Today you don't you, you don't see that uh, the the cable is uh, okay, but tomorrow maybe there's a free, there's broken uh, broken uh, cable because this cable is touching a hot hot surface, so it melt the 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 power of the cable. Okay, it's a, what you call the development uh, develop hazard. Okay, this example is a chemical lab. So, if you are if you are if you are aware of the safety, you already know. You already know what is the hazard inside this lab. You are aware about it, about the hazard, and you have to control. You have to make it what you call in a safety manner. Okay. Okay. This is the uh, example of the lab's lab hazard. Uh, it's a common, okay? And uh, types of light hazard. Maybe the, uh, what we call uh, the hazard may be biological hazard, okay? Hot surface hazard, radical, more in nuclear uh, lab, electrical, common to all lab, okay? Whether in physics, whether in chemical, uh, chemistry, whether in biology, or whether in computer, ergonomic, right? Chemical, mostly. The most one is in the chemical lab, okay? But some maybe in the physics lab, okay? Okay, non ionization or radiation hazard, or mechanical, you should in physics, okay? And there's a, this is some of the hazard. There's so many, many hazard, okay? This some I can uh, give to you uh, the example of the hazard in, in the lab, okay? Okay, when we talk about electrical hazard, but most of the can or most of the lab have electrical. So electrical wiring and ionized uh, uh, electrical cable can create variety of hazard. Maybe electric cushion, okay? Maybe electric shock, okay? Burn or fire. So you must aware of the electrical hazard. You see uh, what the cause? Okay, this is what uh, what is the level of the effect of current? Okay, with the ampere is. Uh, Low, so okay, slightly thinking excitation. But what about is uh, is uh, over 300 ampere? It may be better to you, okay? It may cause death, all right? So make sure that, okay? What it cause? Maybe faulty electrical equipment and instrumentation, faulty wiring or wall are caught. That means our connected unstable practice. This, this is what you have to. Identify when you are the lab, when using the equipment, when when you are <coughs> okay, when you working with the uh, uh, electrical uh, uh, equipment, make sure that, all right. This is example of overloaded cord, all right, extension cord, right. And this is because uh, what you call <coughs> the faulty wiring worn out cord. And sometimes you cannot see, all right. That's why we call something called hidden, hidden hazard. 
Okay, this is double power cord, outlet, and power strip. See, usually uh, you can find you can find it in the computer lab, right? Most of the things, right? Okay, for your safety, this is your safety. Your step you have to uh, look 